Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now this week, we're going to look at why listening to market noise and experts may not be wise. Then we'll get into the Australian stock market so I can share with you my thoughts on where it's heading, along with answering your questions and looking at stocks for you. Hello, I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. And remember, as you subscribe, click the bell on the right of it so you keep up to date with our latest videos. Also, remember to tune in to our live Australian stock market show, which is on every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now, this is the show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favourite stocks and answer all of your questions. Throughout January, the US stock market has been falling away with the Dow Jones index down around 6%, whilst the S&P 500 is down around 8%, and the NASDAQ comp, that's down around 12%. Now, many experts are suggesting that this current weakness is an indication that these markets are crashing. But is this really the case? Whilst I agree with the US market is in a correction, this is vastly different to a crashing. I'd also warn investors to not to put too much attention on the noise that we hear from experts because it can be misleading. Now, there's a vast difference between a forecast and a prediction, which investors typically misunderstand. Now, a forecast is what an expert believes will occur in the future based on what we know today. That said, we have no control over the macro elements that affect the economy, such as COVID, interest rates or government decisions that may affect the market. As such, we may change our forecast as new information comes to light, which may result in the original forecast changing. Now, a prediction, on the other hand, is a form of definite statement that someone believes will actually occur in the future, and they attempt to get others to believe their prediction. This is where investors tend to make mistakes because all too often, they make their investment decisions based on what they believe is a prediction, rather than what might occur. Let me share a story about one investor who contacted us in the last week. And if you want to read the whole statement, it is on the YouTube comments for a past video. Now, they remarked, unfortunately, I have watched too many US YouTube shows. And as a result, early last year, I pulled nearly $700,000 out of the stock market and put it into cash based on their outlooks, i.e., Markets are in a bubble, stocks overpriced, mega crash coming. The investor went on to say that being in cash for the last year resulted in them missing out on gains that they would have otherwise achieved in our market. Now, given that the Australian and US markets have been falling over the past few weeks, investors have been looking to experts for answers. Now, let me be clear right now, I do not believe that the markets are crashing. We are simply experiencing a normal cyclical correction, and as such, the S&P 500 may fall 15% or slightly more from its previous high. All that said, an important piece of advice that investors need to remember is you do not buy an index. Instead, you buy stocks. Therefore, regardless of what the market is doing, investors should only ever buy or sell based on what the stock is telling them. Moving on, it's time we got into the markets and first up, as always, we'll get into what were the best and worst performing sectors last week. All sectors in the Australian market were down last week. However, the best performing sectors included energy and that was down just 0.17 of a percent, followed by consumer staples down 1.39 percent and materials that was down 2.05 percent. The worst performing sectors included information technology, and that was down 4.41%, followed by healthcare down 4.35%, and communication services down 3.68%. The best performers in the S&P ASX Top 100 stocks included JB Hi-Fi, which was up 5.83%, followed by Northern Star Resources up 5.70%, and Worley, that was up 3.94%. The worst performing stocks included Blue Scope Steel, which was down 10.41%, followed by Reese, it was down 9.11%, and Next DC, that was down 9%. So what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the charts for our S&P 500, all Ordinary's index update for this week. We'll also answer your questions and look at the stocks that you've chosen for me. 
But what an interesting start to the year. And in fact, I think last week I had a great start to the year where I said, um, welcome back. Oh, mate, this is my first report for 2021 when I actually should have said 2022. But hey, that just proves us experts can be wrong, like I was saying in the earlier part of the report. Now, it really is important you actually really do understand that point um, from my report a little bit earlier there where experts, we look at the past, we look at probability, we look at what we're seeing on the charts today based on everything that we know today. And we have a probability of something may occur. And that's why we give you those forecasts. So we might forecast that the market will go down 10%, 15%. It might go to 5,000 points, 7,000 points, or 70,000 points, whatever that is. But that is only a forecast. And, and it really is important because that comment that uh, I actually did put up in the first part of the report, I get those things all of the time. Um, and I've been, as most of you probably know if you've been watching long enough, I've been doing this sort of thing for 25 plus years. And, you know, it's so common for me to get emails or a phone call or a comment on a YouTube, Facebook, whatever, social media, and people go, oh, I get these experts' reports and blah, 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 blah. And people blindly follow them. And to me, you should not be doing that. And I did a podcast last week and it was based on some of the, some stuff or information from one of my favorite books called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And basically it says you need to be making your own decisions and making your own mind up rather than following other people. Now, here's me, an expert, a stock market expert, telling you not necessarily to follow experts. Take out information, great, but also do your own research and satisfy yourself as to what to do. But the, as I said, the critical part of that first part of the commentary on this on this week's report was really that last part saying, really do always don't think the market is your stock. So people constantly make decisions about their stock or their portfolio based on what the predictions are for the market. I've heard so many people, you know, sell out like that person that did because somebody was predicting a crash. Now, they on their comment they actually mentioned various experts, very very well known experts on their videos predicting a crash. Now, one of those experts I know has been predicting a crash for several years. Um, and eventually you're going to get it right, aren't you? If you keep predicting a crash, one day it's going to happen. But the point of view is, or the point that I'm trying to make to you is you buy stocks, you do not buy an index. You only ever buy stocks. So I only ever make my decisions to buy or sell a stock based on the stock itself, not what the overall market is doing. Because remember, especially in Australia, our market is super, super top heavy with those top 20 stocks. So they could be going down and the rest of the market could be going going up, but our market could be going sideways or slightly down because of those top 20 stocks moving down. And it's almost a similar situation in the US with those top 20 stocks in the US because it's heavily tech weighted. So if you're seeing the tech stocks come down, the US market is going to be weak, but it doesn't mean there's not going to be lots of stocks in the US market going up or counter to the direction of the market. So hopefully you've got all of that, but let's get into the Australian stock market and see what's happening because it is quite interesting right now. Now on your screen is my All Lord News Index chart that you see every single week. There's almost no work on it, which is why I like to keep it for everybody so that everybody is included in it. If I put a lot of technical stuff on it, that's probably good for my ego because you go, wow, Dale can put a lot of stuff on it, but it doesn't necessarily help everybody. I try to keep things really, really high level so that everybody can get something out of these charts. Now, looking at the monthly chart on the left there, so I've just opened it up so you can see. Currently, you can see January there is closing at 7490.10 point. That was on last Friday there, and you can see there, so far, that's the lowest close of the All Ordinaries Index. If we go right back here, it's the lowest close since right back there in May on a monthly basis. Now we haven't finished January yet, so it's not conclusive, but it's the lo lowest close. We've seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months. We've also, a couple of other interesting things in January, we also made a new all time high. So we had a last dip ditch effort to go up before coming back down again. And as I said, I've been saying a long time, our market was slowing, momentum was slowing, there's possibility that our market will come down. Now the interesting thing, now looking at this, if I use my little tool, you can see, if I put the lock on so you can make sure we've got it here, put it to there, that move down was about 6.57%. This is since the uh, COVID low. If we go to this one, you can see 6.06%. And if we look from here to here, you can see that was 5.77% through there. So these are the sorts of falls we've been having. Currently, the market fell down 6.14%. Currently, it's down 5.86% for 
January. So it's one of the big ones. It's bigger than here, bigger than here. So it's the second largest one since the start of this COVID bull run. But I would expect this one's going to get a little bit larger and will be the biggest one because generally our market will have a fall every couple of years of a larger percentage. Now we have falls every year of somewhere between five and 8%. Generally, we also have roughly every couple of years, we have one between sort of eight and 12%. Sometimes we'll even have those during a year uh, up to 12%, but they're a little bit rarer. But in about every four years, we have a much larger fall again. So given we had a large fall through here in March 2020, there's no reason why I'm not considering this market will fall away a little bit heavier. I would expect our market would fall no more than sort of 12, maybe up to 15%. If it does that, and if it's where we look at it here, so we go from 12%, so I'll drop right down to 12%. Roughly, where is it? 12%. It gets us down to about 7,000 points ish, roughly. Down to 15% gets us down to around about there. So around about 7,700 ish points. Now you've got to look at that and go, in the bigger scheme of things, was that big? Now look at back here. If we go back on a monthly chart, was this big fall? Was that in the big scheme of things? Is that too much? Well, let's have a look at that one. That was 15.47%. Let's look at this fall in the big scheme of things. That was 20.13%. This is all since the GFC low. So you can see there it does regularly has pullbacks of larger magnitudes, 24.46%. So having a fall down here is not unusual that we're going to get a slightly larger fall because we haven't had a large fall for pretty much a couple of years since that March 2020. Now, obviously March 2022 will be two years since that low and it's not, it wouldn't surprise me if we spend more time down going down into February. We may have a bottom in March, but I think the bottom and will probably happen in February, probably by the last ditch or last um, mid mid February at the latest, possibly into the last part of February. But I do expect a multi week decline down through here. So just be careful. Even just using a real basic trend line, like I talk about in my book, which it's really it, both of my books actually. It's obviously, the first one, which is how to beat the managed funds by twenty percent. That was telling you to get out somewhere around about there on a stock, but I must have said on if the All Lords was a stock, it would have been around about there you would have been getting out. Now you can get that book for free, you just gotta pay shipping, just go onto a website, it's on the front page. You'll see it right there, just click on it and we can send that book out to you free. You just gotta pay the shipping. Um, if you've read that one, maybe you get my second book, Accelerate Your Wealth. It'll show you a lot more, but you can see if I just expand that up, you can see this big move down last week. We probably moved down a little bit today on Monday, be simply because obviously the, the US market did fall heavily and you know our market sometimes responds and you'll see. But it wouldn't surprise me if our market dipped today and traded back up again either because the big end of town know that the retail traders will be out there selling and they might buy into some of that to accumulate some shares. But right now I would expect our market to continue to fall away a little bit more over the next few weeks, but nothing to be worried about. And this is what I'll trying to share with everybody. Don't just dump all your stocks thinking the market's gonna crash because some expert on YouTube said so. Now, you know, not everybody's an expert on the stock market, but they do put out those headlines. Now, you're probably watching this video because of the headline of the video, and that's what we find. The, the more, how do I say, inflammatory the headline, the more people wanna watch it. And it seems to me that's a sad thing that we have to do that on YouTube just to get you to watch the YouTube videos that we've gotta put down stock market crashing so a lot more people watch it. And the thing is, is why do people watch it is because they're fearful of the market. And, and what I'll share with you, you do not ever, ever, ever need to be fearful of the stock market. I'm never fearful of the market because I know what's going to happen if, I, if the market goes up and I know what's going to happen if the market goes down. And what I mean by that is I don't need to necessarily know exactly what the market's going to do. I just need to know with 100% certainty what I'm going to do. And it's like driving a car. If you're driving down the car and you know you've got, you know, you're driving up to a, a set of traffic lights and the light is red and you drive through it. Now the chances are you might get hit by a car but it's not 100% guaranteed. You might get hit by a car coming the other way. You might get through it three out of time, three out of 10 times or five out of 10 times or even eight out of 10 times. You might get through unscathed. But probability suggests we should be stopping that. So we put the brakes on to stop. But what if you don't have brakes? Could you stop? 
And the answer is no, you can't. If you're going at 60 kilometers or 100 kilometers an hour and you're going to an intersection, the light turns red, you're not going to be able to stop. So the chances are some of those times you're going to get hit and some of the times you're not because you don't have brakes. And what I mean by brakes in the terms of the stock market is a strategy. We accelerate, that's a strategy. We also brake, that's also a strategy. So a lot of people have a strategy to accelerate by just buying stocks when they think the market's bullish, but also selling when they're fearful of it. And the reason why they're fearful of it is nobody ever rings me when the stock they own is going up. They only ring when it's going down. They only, the amount of posts that I get when the market's falling and stocks are falling dramatically increases. It's simply because you do not have a plan. If you don't have a plan to enter and exit and protect your capital, then you are gambling with your money, just like you're gambling with your life when you drive through an intersection with no brakes uh, and not slowing down for that because you increase the likelihood of something bad happen. So as I said, you don't need to be fearful of the market. And as I said, just buy my book. Just pay the shipping, get my first book, and you'll never get caught in a stock market crash ever if you follow the rules. And I know that for certainty because I know people missed the GFC by reading my book and I know people missed COVID and all sorts of other different market pullbacks because they've read that book. So I encourage you to get out and, and buy that book. But that's it for me today on the stock market. Now it's time we get into your questions for me. Now the first question we have today is from John who says, Hi Dale, welcome back and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you mate and all of the other people that wished me um, well, um, on the comment section last week on YouTube, a lot of people saying, hey, thanks, now I've got something to do on my Mondays and Tuesdays, missed your reports, those sorts of, sorts of nice comments. So thank you, everybody, who did post all those comments. It's good to, be, uh, good to know that Janine and I have been missed. Um, it's always good to know that. But look, it, I think this year is going to be an exciting. I know Janine and I did um, our, our first live show we did last Tuesday night. We talked a little bit about the market and what we wanted, what we thought the market would do. But John's gone on to ask, he said, I've got a question on BHP on my watch list. I'm not planning to buy at the moment, but I've noticed that there is a significant increase in short seller positions over the last few months, even with the share price rising. On the 14th of December, there was an 8.11% short seller position. And by the 11th of January, there was a 9.16% short selling position. Now, BHP is the sixth most shorted stock on the ASX. Should this give me any concerns on purchasing BHP if I see these types of trends. Um, he also goes on to mean that there are people in the know that predict a share price drop is coming or should I avoid looking at short seller positions as it may be clouding my judgments about stocks. Best regards, John. Um, first comment is, yeah, it does cloud your judgment about stocks. I mean, you only have to look at Tesla was the most shorted stock on the US market for so long, even though it was going up and up and up and up and up. And the premise of that is to keep more analogy around that. It's like walking up a seesaw. The, hot, the more you walk upwards, the higher the probability it's going to turn over and go down. It's the same with stocks, whether it's BHP or any stock, you'll see the higher a stock goes up, the higher the probability that that stock will hit a peak and start to fall away. So short sellers make money on the market falling. So they're just hedging their bets, waiting, and they're thinking it's going to fall over at some time soon. So if a market is moving up, but they're also looking at long-term long -term expectations on the market and what is happening. So if they're expecting the market to have a bit of a pullback into January, you can, you can understand them taking their short seller positions and getting into those positions and then just waiting for a little while and you know, as we saw with um, some stocks we get short squeezes where the market the, the stock just keeps going up and then they start taking out and the market moves up again so some of the rise in BHP could have been that some short sellers getting you know having to get out of their position or unwind their position because BHP has been a little bit bullish lately as you did mention but again I really wouldn't take too much into those short seller positions positions I know JB Hi-Fi was one of them um, for, for a long long time you know as far the most shorted stocks and everything else. Always look at the stocks for your, your decision to buy or sell. But I do take a little bit, or Janine, I do take a little bit of um, information in about those short sellers. But again, it doesn't really super indicate or doesn't, doesn't influence our decisions too much. We always take our decisions off the stock itself. But let's go and have a quick look at the chart for you and have a see what BHP has been doing. You can see on the left there, BHP has been rising strongly. It started rising really, really strongly back there in November. So this is why the short seller positions were rising because sometimes you'll see a stock, and I know I've done, I've shown everybody this before. If I use my little trendo, you see a stock move up and then do that and start to go away again. So what you'll get in this sort of period is short sellers coming, and especially on a stock like BHP. 
because it's a more volatile stock than most other stocks. It runs really hard when it does run. And you can see there, uh, sorry, I just used the wrong tool there. Get rid of that tool. Let me use the right tool. You can see there from that high there back in July right through to um, that low there back in November, it did it fell 34.81%. So short sellers would have been making money through there. They would have exited some of their positions down somewhere in through there and then it rose up. And they may have been thinking it's going to rise up a little bit and then fall away. Now, quite often the market won't rise back anywhere near as much or a stock won't rise back anywhere near as much as what it fell if it's going to continue to fall away. This is the issue through here is when it kept moving up strongly right there through December and then obviously through January, you may have got in this period in January, some of the short sellers exiting some of their positions just to unwind those positions. But it doesn't mean BHP won't fall away. I would expect BHP to fall away a little bit. Um, as you can see there last week, it opened, pushed right up, come down. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks straight up. It's rare to see BHP do, and it rose. Let me have a look at that. From that low down in there back in November, it rose up. 35.66%. But if you go back and look at probability, how often does BHP rise for nine weeks straight up? And we got one, two, three, four, five sideways, you know, but you can want to count that six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, and then it went down again. So I would expect BHP, you can keep looking at it if you like. If you really understand the history of BHP, look for past parts where it went up nine weeks. It, you can't see, we're right back now into 2013. And I can't really see a, a rise of nine weeks or more. Here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one down. But even that, eight, nine, 10, 11. So before it had a bigger fall down through here. So just be careful. I would expect BHP in the short term to be weak. Um, I don't mind BHP this year. And Jan Janine and I did talk about BHP, Rio and, and Fortescue. And we will talk about Fortescue in a minute. But we talked about those, those stocks last week or in last week's live YouTube show. So go to last week's live YouTube stream and you'll be able to see us talking about BHP. As I said, Rio and FNG. And FNG's done really, really well. But right now I'd expect BHP to fall uh, and probably fall somewhere in the relative rounds and somewhere sort of below that sort of level down to 43. It probably could even get down to that 41 or 40 level and, and it possibly may even go below that little gap there. But right now, at this point in time, I'm with you, mate, John. I'm not getting into BHP right now. I want to see some sort of support and then start to rise up again to make sure this new move is a more of a long-term move. But thank you very much for asking the question. I know somebody else did ask a question on BHP as well. So hopefully um, I have answered your question as well if you're watching. The next question we got is from Chris who says, Hi Dale, welcome back. Wondering if you could shed some light on the future potential of brain chip. Um, had this on my watch list for over a year, but generally stay away from stocks around a dollar or less. Would love to hear your thoughts on whether it's an investment in, in this is still possible or if the boat has sailed. If you've been watching it for a year, you should have already been in it from, from my take, but let's go and have a look at the stock itself. I'll just bring up brain chip. Thing is with stocks like this, and you're right, because they do run on, on news and they do, they're quite volatile now. What happens with stocks like this, and I generally get people asking lots and lots of questions from me, on stocks like this, and you'll start seeing, you'll see lots of videos out on brain chip at the moment from people um, on YouTube and all those sorts of things, because what you find is a lot of retail investors um, will watch the, the, the biggest rises. They'll look at the biggest rises, biggest volume stocks for the weeks and stuff like that. So here's this stock moved up through here, and then all of a sudden, most in through here, I would get most of the retail investors getting interested. So emails coming through, people asking me about brain chip, and then obviously, it's because it's moved up super, super strong. So if we look at from the close of the week on the 31st of December for last year, within two weeks, this stock was up 120%. So everybody jumps in late thinking FOMO, this is what's happening. So it jumps because people weren't probably, um, they are probably on holidays here, not necessarily thinking about the market, and all of a sudden they see this stock jump up. Then you've got the majority of the masses starting to get in on this sort of week, which was last week. So it went up 56% before closing up 17% for the, for the week. And this is why you've got to be careful. I'm saying you've missed the boat on this at the moment. So you can see the most of the volume that week, which is this week, and most of the volume, the biggest volume week last week. So people that got in early, would have been selling out through here, and this is what's happening. But if you can look at the volume the week before, and that last week, 
through here. So on that downward wake, very, very low volume. So somebody's pumped this stock up and this is why you gotta be careful. And obviously it's having good rules. There was an entry rule that we teach in, just in our basic course, our $2,000 or 1997 Your Trading Mentor course, there was an entry in that would have seen you up 134% right now. So if you'd put $1,000 in this stock based on the rules that we had in that course, you'd be, would have paid for the course in two weeks just on this stock. So it's a pretty good investment if you ask me, learning how to get into these stocks and you would have been into that. So where was it now? I wouldn't be getting into this stock right now, right? It, it is looking a little bit weak through here. I'm not saying it's not gonna keep going up, but it's really, because if something goes up that fast, it's gonna struggle. Uh, to keep going at that rates because with the market moving down, you're gonna get people with f um, fear of losing their money. So you, I would suspect a lot of people are gonna start selling into that. And this is why part of the reason why I don't look at these $1 stocks. And you only have to, there was a report I, in one of the major Australian newspapers only about a week or so ago that, um, regarding the, you know those Robin Hood traders and also the ramping of GameStop and things like that. Um, and that forum in the US, the, the what do they call it? the uh, um, Wall Street prediction people that try and ramp stocks and we see st uh, those and this this journalist actually studied or this breaking house studied all the recommendations by these places trying to ramp stocks these chat forums and they found that they got it wrong most of the time and they lost on most of them so occasionally they'll get one winner uh, and they'll get people more onto those forums to do that but the majority of people won't be making money out of that and we've seen that um, right across the board so be really really careful especially now the market's not super bullish as you can see so don't I, I wouldn't be jumping on a brain stop right now um, I'd be looking if I was in brain stop right now brain chip sorry is this a brain chip I've got to put my glasses back on again I'm saying game stop brain chip brain chip I wouldn't be in brain chip right if I was in brain chip right now I'd be looking to probably take an exit on that and setting a strategy where it's like, okay at that point if it goes below that I'm out of that and taking my profit but don't look at getting into it but very much thank you very much for that the question the last question we have today is from Talia who says hi Dale how is FMG looking for the next few months so let's get into having a quick look at FMG for Talia and I'll put my glasses on um, and looking at, as I said, if you want to go and look at uh, last week's live show, which and then I we talk a bit about FMG, Rio and, and Fortescue, but it, pretty much the same thing with FMG, isn't it? Um, FMG has done really, really well, better than BHP and Fortescue, uh, uh, Rio over the past few weeks. And you can see there's up 50% where you saw BHP was about 35%. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks up, a little bit of a bearish week there. So I think we're probably going to get some short-term weakness like we are with BHP, uh, and then that will tell us where the next few months will be. But if uh, you, you don't tell me whether you're in the stock or you're looking to buy it. Um, if you are in this stock, I'd be looking to set an exit strategy on that probably. Um, and if you're not in it, I think you, the boat's really gone at this point in time. If it does keep going from here, then uh, look, I'm saying it, it probably could be quite, quite a good bullish stock, but I do like... Fortescue, BHP and Rio more for medium to longer term, but right now it's a bit too early to get into them. I think we need to see them come back, settle a little bit and then turn around to say that they, they are moving up. But right now, as I said, just I would think if you're not in Fortescue, just stay out of it. But thank you very much for sending your question in. I really do appreciate that. And also thanks to everyone else for sending in their questions. And if you do have a question of your own that you'd like me to answer, first publicly subscribe to our channel as that way I know you're a subscriber to our channel as I always answer these questions and then type your question below in the comments section. Now, the questions I'll answer next week will be below on this video. I don't go searching through lots of videos looking for questions that people may have posted. I always only, only answer the questions um, that are on the video the week prior to this mark, mark report. But again, as I said, you need to subscribe to the channel. Also give us a big like. If you do like our channel, that really does help Janine and I get this channel out to more people. So give us a big thumbs up. Say, hey, I love your channel. Um, you and Janine do a fantastic job, whatever that is. Um, and as I said, subscribe to the channel. Now remember, we also do these um, market reports every single Monday. And we also do our live stream every Tuesday night, 7 to 8 p.m. So we'd love to see you tomorrow night on the live stream. So hit the subscribe button now. Click the bell on the right of it so you know when we upload videos and go live. That's it for me. I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Goodbye, good luck and good trading.